So I'm going to start sharing my screen, which will give you a little bit of a sort of presentation or outline of who we are and what we're doing. So you will have gathered, my name's, well, my name's Kayla. You can see it on the screen. I am the lead facilitator, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, what that means. But basically, you'll hear from me quite a lot when we're all here in the big room to sort of set the scene and keep framing what we're, what we're doing and keeping the meeting going. So I'll start sharing my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that and it will get better in a sec. Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, if you've got sort of lots of people's faces covering up part of the screen, you should be able to go and just change the view so that you can uh, just have either me or even not me just in the corner there. It's usually at the top of the bits where all the people are. You get little different squares that you can pick which one is going to work for you. So do feel free to um, play with that so that it looks, makes it most easy for you to see. So, as we've said, Citizens Assembly on Democracy in the UK. Welcome to the first meeting. So, this Citizens Assembly has been brought together to consider fundamentally this big question of how should democracy in the UK work? That's what we're going to be looking at. So, who's involved? Uh, the Constitution Unit. Constitution Unit is part of the University College London, and they are the ones basically that have made this assembly happen. And you can find out lots more about them on this website link, but also you've been sent this in some of the information that's been sent to you in advance. So they're the ones behind it. They're the ones who came up with the idea. They're the ones who sort of set the big question for us. And the other group that's involved, and you will have uh, heard from lots of, my, lots of my team so far, are an organization called Involve. We're a UK-wide charity. who basically specializes in the delivery of participation events like this. So it's a team from Involve, um, Charlotte and Rebecca and others who you will have been in contact with and Ed during, during the lead up to the assembly. And we're the, we're the group that sort of do the facilitation side, the making the meeting run. So how is it gonna work? We're gonna meet over six weekends to learn about and consider issues relating to what would be a good democracy in the UK. And throughout this, there'll be a mixture of presentations where we've invited people to come and talk to you and give you information and share their ideas with you. Lots of opportunities to ask questions of the people who are coming to present. But also more importantly, a lot of the time will be spent in smaller groups with other assembly members, actually talking about and sharing your own views. And at the end, you, the members, We'll be looking to develop some conclusions and some recommendations to address this overarching question of how democracy should work in the UK. And I guess before we go any further, don't worry if you think this is not a question you know much about yet. You do. You all live and have an experience of living within the UK's democracy, whether you actively participate in it or whether you just, um, you know, have the results happen around you. But as we go forward, there'll be lots of opportunities to expand your understanding, test things out with others, and, you know, draw some conclusions. So how it works, anyone who's looked around when we're in the main room will see that lots of people have kind of titles in front of their names. So we've got the facilitators, uh, so my team there. And the facilitator's role is when we go into these small groups, their role is to really help make sure that you're able to make the most of your discussions and that everybody gets a chance to have their views heard and their views considered. You'll also see we've got the support team online. Now the support team have been helping people get set up to start the Zoom calls, but they're there to help if there are any problems throughout the meetings. So you can always message using the chat. So hopefully people will have seen the chat function. The messages in the chat will go straight to the support team and you know, so if you're having any problems, they'll be able to hopefully get in touch and sort that out. And then we also have our production team. So the production team, the ones running in the background, keeping Zoom working, 
doing things like the recordings when they need it, doing things like putting you into breakout rooms. We also have speakers. So we've got a number of speakers who are invited and going to be speaking to you throughout the day. And they'll be presenting, you know, a wide range of information. And each time we're doing a presentation or the speakers are presenting, we're going to be recording that because it's, it's quite important for the wider, the bigger picture, the bigger population that actually, you know, if they're interested in this, they get to see and hear what information has been shared with you. We also have some observers who are here interested in the process. They won't be participating in the discussion, but they'll, they'll sort of be in the background seeing what's going on, particularly when we're all in a big group like this together. And we also have some researchers. And the researchers are there because, as we said, um, UCL, the Constitution Unit, who are driving this project, it's part of a bigger project around um, the future of democracy. And you'll get a chance to hear a bit more about that. Uh, a little bit a little bit later but everybody else who just have their name are actually you the members so 74 members of the assembly you've been selected to be a diverse group of people from right across the uk representative demographically representative of the country and we know because some of the questions you've already answered for us have a really wide range of views on democracy and that's what hopefully makes this exciting so your role is really just to, to listen and consider the evidence that's presented to you, to discuss and consider different perspectives, because there will be lots of them, to share your views as honestly and you know, genuinely and openly as you can, and then work together to draw conclusions and start with here, well, where is, where is there common ground? So the agenda for this weekend, we're going to spend some time this morning where you'll get a chance to actually meet some of the other members and work out how we can all work best together. We're gonna to hear more about the background. So as I said, you'll hear from Alan from the Constitution Unit shortly, a bit more giving context to the assembly. We're going to start exploring what democracy is and how it works in the UK and thinking about what, what a good democracy looks like, looks like and feels like. And start thinking about some of the things that are you know, priorities, the things that we value, the things that concern us about how democracy is happening around us at present. So I think that's all I really need to say now. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And really the, the thing we're going to do next and the thing that's quite important is we're gonna give you a chance to meet some of the other members and you know, a few introductions. This is the group that you're gonna be working with today. So hopefully, um, Juliet, we're ready to open up the breakout rooms. Great. Hopefully, as I was just saying to the people who got back earlier, you had a chance to meet some of the people that you're going to be working with. The, this is the group that you're going to be working with today. So, you know, if you feel that you're a bit sort of in the middle of a conversation and things, you know, you got pulled back into this main room, that's okay. When we put you back, you'll be in the same group. If there's things that were sort of, you know, you were, you were starting to talk about that you didn't get a chance to finish. You can, you can jump back into some of those conversations. But really now, um, I want to introduce the first of our, our speakers today, really, who is Alan Rennick. He's the Deputy Director of the Constitution Unit and Associate Professor in British Politics at University College London. But Alan is really the principal investigator. He's the one who's driven this process to happen. So, and you'll be hearing from him. He'll be with us all the way through this journey as well. So I'm going to hand over to Alan now to give you a bit of sort of background and context about the assembly and get a get a wider understanding about what's going on and why we're all here. Over to you, Alan. Uh, great, Kayla. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, great to see you all again. I've met many of you already uh, during the intro chats that we've had over the last few weeks. Uh, so it's great to meet you all again. Now, I'm just going to share my screen as Kayla did so that I can show you some slides. Let me just uh, get that set up there. Uh, so hopefully you can now uh, see my screen so you can see me uh, with extra hair on top there. Uh, so as Kayla said, I'm from uh, the Constitution Unit at University College London. Um, uh, and what I'm going to talk about is very quickly, what is the Citizens' Assembly on Democracy in the UK? Then what's the Citizens' Assembly all about? Why have, 
why have we called this into being? Uh, how does the Citizens' Assembly fit in to wider discussions about democracy? Okay. Uh, and then what will we be doing over the six weekends of, of the Assembly? So um, what is the Citizens' Assembly? Well, as Kayla said earlier, the Citizens' Assembly essentially is you. You are the members. You are the Citizens' Assembly. So you are 74 people, as it turned out, from all across uh, the UK. And as Kayla said, you really do reflect the makeup of the adult population in the UK. So you are from every part of the UK. You are slightly more women than men, uh, just as in the population as a whole. Uh, you, the youngest of you is 18, the oldest over 80. Uh, there are people among you who have university degrees. There are people among you who have learnt mainly through the school of life. Uh, so you reflect the diversity of the UK in so many different ways. And you'll be meeting over six weekends to think, to listen, to talk, to work out uh, what you think, and then to make recommendations. And I've been involved in a number of these citizens' assemblies over the last few years. And I, I, I can tell you, it's just an incredible experience. It's a fantastic thing to be part of. Uh, it's an amazing process to go through. So I really hope you're all going to enjoy this. You're going to find it fulfilling. You're going to find it fascinating. You'll learn a lot. You'll think a lot. You'll meet all sorts of new people. And uh, it'll be a really great experience for you. Um, what's the Citizens' Assembly talking about then? So as, Sayla, as Kayla said, the big question is how should democracy in the UK work? And why do we want to ask that question? Well, I guess there are two sorts of uh, reasons that come to my mind. One is lots of people are just a bit happy with how the system works now, and that's been the case for quite a long time. And also the system, particularly in the last few years, has been under quite a lot of strain and a lot of questions have been raised about how the system should work. So I'll just say a little bit more about each of those things. Um, so, on being generally a bit unhappy with how the system is working. So the Citizens' Assembly is part of a wider project, as Kyla said, looking at attitudes to democracy in the UK. And we also ran a big survey of the UK population over the summer in which we asked people lots of questions. And one of the things that we asked people was about whether they trust um, various different bits of the political system. And you can see there, um, only 23% of people, so that's just under a quarter of people, said that they trust the Prime Minister. Uh, just a little bit more of the UK Parliament, civil service, and a bit more of the court system. Uh, so there are lots of other people uh, who either said they didn't trust these parts of the system, or they said they weren't sure, or they, they weren't sure whether they trusted. So that suggests there's a lot of people who feel quite distant from uh, our key parts of our democratic system. Um, it's all, not all kind of doom and gloom. So we also ask people this question on the whole, how satisfied are you with the way democracy works in the United Kingdom? And you can see only 7% said that they were very satisfied. So seven out of every 100 people said that they were very satisfied. But 47%, so almost half, said that they were fairly satisfied. And if you add those two groups together, you can see more than half of people said that they were at least somewhat satisfied. Uh, with the system. Then 28% said not very satisfied, and 12%, so about one in eight people, said they were not at all satisfied, and then another 7% did, said they didn't know. So there's quite a spread of opinion there that you can see there. So that's one point, that for quite a long time there's been a general sense that people feel uh, they're not necessarily very happy with how our democracy works. Um, then, as I also said, just in the last few years, the system has been under quite a lot of strain. So many of you will remember that we had a referendum uh, five years ago, and that raised many, many questions about whether referendums are a good way of deciding important matters. Many people would say, yes, absolutely. Referendums are a way in which uh, the members of the public themselves can decide uh, key issues. Other people would have concerns that referendums are divisive. Um, or maybe aren't a good way of making informed decisions. So there's a, a, a serious debate there. Another question that has come up is how much power should the prime minister have? So if we think about the last couple of years with COVID, um, the prime minister and the government have made all sorts of changes to how we live our lives. 
Um, there are big questions about just how much power should the prime minister and a few people at the top of government have to make those decisions? Or should such decisions be subject to more careful scrutiny? Uh, should parliament be more involved in those kinds of processes? There are questions about what standards of behaviour live up to. Should, should we expect our politicians to be honest? Is it more important that they just manage to deliver the goods? Uh, there are questions about the standards of behaviour that we as citizens should live up to. Uh, should we be getting actively involved in politics or is it fine if we leave that to others? Should we be prepared to listen to others and hear their views even when we disagree with them? So they're important questions for us. And then also there have been questions about how should basic rights and values be protected uh, in our system? Is it right that we deal with all of the quite contentious issues that sometimes come up through political processes, or should judges be involved, the courts be involved in protecting some rights, just how should the system work? So these and many, many other questions have come up over uh, the last few years and have suggested that it's really time for us to look deeply at our democratic system and how should it really work. It's important to remember that there are no, there's no single right answer to any of these questions. Um, democracy comes in many, many different forms. And what we're interested in here, here is what are your views on how you would like democracy in the UK to work? It's also important to say that we have six weekends, but even across six weekends, we won't be able to cover everything. There are many, many aspects of our democracy. And I mean, this weekend, it'll be great just to hear whatever you think about how democracy works. But as we go on, we'll be wanting to narrow down a bit in order to focus in on some parts of the system. And also finally, it's important to say that this is relevant wherever you are uh, in the UK. Um, I should say, by the way, if there are any of you from the Scottish islands, uh, I apologize that you're not on the map and you're on, on your screen there, but you're very much part of uh, the Citizens Assembly. So th th this is relevant um, for the government of the UK as a whole, how democracy in the UK as a whole works. And it's also, also relevant for uh, uh, how things work in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, in Wales, in England, in every part of the country. Okay. So how then does the citizens lift in this wide debate uh, about uh, democracy in the UK? Um, and uh, so as Kayla said, we are, so I'm from the, from the Constitution Unit at University College London, and we're working with involve uh, Kayla's team in delivering the assembly. So um, I'm coming this, uh, at this as an academic. I'm doing research. We as a team are doing research, understanding people's views of democracy and also understanding how processes of citizens assemblies work. But most importantly, we believe that it's important for debates about democracy in the UK to be informed. And we want the conclusions of this assembly to influence those wider debates. And just to illustrate the degree to which there is wide interest in how the citizens assembly is working and what it says, um, we have an advisory board who we have been meeting with over the summer to talk about how we should um, set up this assembly. And I've put on some of its members there. So Jeremy Wright on the left is a Conservative MP and former cabinet minister. Shami Chakrabarti next to him is a Labour member of the House of Lords, a very senior member of the Labour Party. Joanna Cherry is a Scottish National Party uh, MP. So, uh, Jonathan Sumption is a former judge of the Supreme Court and a very prominent thinker about our democracy. Anne and Menon is a very senior academic and again a very prominent commentator about uh, how our politics works. And Francis Foley is a democratic campaigner uh, and campaigner on many other things. And they're just a selection of some of the people in our advisory board. Uh, and that just illustrates the degree to which there is great interest among politicians, among all sorts of people who have the power to put things into effect, there's great interest in what you say. So at the end of the Citizens Assembly, we'll be putting together a report that will contain your recommendations and your words, and we will present that report to people in parliaments and in governments in London, in uh, Edinburgh, in Belfast, and in uh, Cardiff. Uh, and we'll be speaking with campaigners uh, all around the country uh, and trying to make sure that your voice is heard as much as possible. 
Um, so finally, very key we do. Uh, so Kayla said uh, already at this weekend we have some introductions just to get to understand how the assembly works, uh, get you meeting each other. Then we'll have some initial thoughts on your thoughts on how democracy should work. Um, then next weekend we'll be taking those initial thoughts further, and then we'll also be exploring. Uh, how democracy in the UK works today. So it's important to understand how the democracy works at the moment so that we can think about um, whether it needs to change and if so, how it needs to change. Then in weekend three, we'll be looking at how, how the heart of the democratic system should work. So government and parliament, uh, how they should relate to each other, how they should operate, just what should be going on at the heart of uh, the democratic system. Weekend four, we'll be looking at the roles that the public can play. Should we have more referendums? Are there other ways in which people should be able to get involved in the democratic process? Weekend five, we'll look at that question that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, how should we protect basic rights and values? And then finally at weekend six, we'll be tying it all together. You'll be able to draw out conclusions. Hopefully we'll also have a great celebration of all that we have achieved over the course of the assembly. So that's a very quick introduction to the assembly. And now I will hand back to Kayla. Okay, thank you, Alan. Now, I know there's going to be sort of, you know, probably lots of questions about how this fits in, how, you know, how this is actually all going to come together. But I guess what I'm going to ask you at a minute is to just go with us for a bit. There'll be opportunities to ask um, to ask questions as we go through, and Alan will be with us all the way through the journey, so we're able to come and revisit back how some of this information is going to be used. But I guess just just go with us for a bit, get into the experience, start to see how it will all come together, and you know there'll be further opportunities to ask questions later. The thing that we're going to do now, though, is we're going to put you back in the breakout rooms for a second because. As you'll know, we're here on Zoom, and although many of us have, you know, got used to some of these things, at some point, this is still an unusual experience. So we want to talk about how we can just have the types of conversations that are going to be productive, are going to be constructive, are going to be enjoyable, are going to feel like you're actually getting to uh, talk about what you want to talk about, but also having your views heard and listened to. So I'm proposing to start off with some sort of conversation guidelines for how we manage these conversations. Because as you can see, there's like over 80 of us on, on the Zoom call that does, just as you would if we were meeting in, in person in a, in a big function room, need to have some sort of guidelines in place to make sure it's not just the loudest voice and the person who speaks first that gets to be heard. So when you're in the discussions, uh, one of the suggest the guidelines I'd like to pro that propose is this idea of one voice at a time. And on Zoom, I think you'll you'll learn that that's even so sort of slightly more important because it's, you can't have little side conversations on Zoom. So one voice at a time. That everybody's here. Everybody's here because they have something to say. They have the right to speak and be listened to. Another guideline is just recognizing that you know there is a real diversity of views. And you know, I'm sure that's coming up already as you had those very initial conversations. We can disagree, and that's fine. I expect we probably all you know that you will disagree with each other, but we can also try not to be disagreeable about it. This idea of step up and step back. I guess I'm asking people there, like, if you know you're someone who is always the first one to jump in, always has something to say, then sometimes step back a bit. Just let someone else go first. But at the same point, you know, if you know you're a bit quieter and you know that you tend to sort of wait, take it upon yourself to sort of step up sometimes because what well, everyone wants to hear what you've got to say. The what's said in the Zoom room stays in the Zoom room is very much this idea of like we're we're trying to create a space where people can have these sort of open conversations. So you know, we're asking you, I guess, to respect people's privacy, people's um, personal opinions, not to be going away and saying, oh, you wouldn't believe what, you know, John in my room said, and, you know, identifying anybody by their name outside of the Zoom room. And 
it is a reality. Tech problems will probably happen. And I know some of you have sort of had some experience this morning, but hopefully we're getting a lot of it sorted out. I'm going to ask people, you know, tech problems will happen just the same as if you were going to, you know, a meeting in person, you might miss your bus. Things happen. Let's try and be patient and supportive of each other throughout this process and help each other when, you know, if people are struggling a bit with some of the tech. So what I'm going to do now is uh, ask, we'll put you back in the breakout rooms and just give you a little bit of time to, to sort of reflect on what are some of the other things that actually can make the discussions we're going to be having over the next six weekends work for you and for groups to think about are there additional things they want to add to those conversation guidelines. So uh, Juliet, when you're ready, we can open up the breakout rooms and I'll see you all shortly. We talked about, uh, we mentioned earlier that you'll be hearing lots of presentations, lots of information, lots of stuff designed to get you thinking and, and sort of widen out some of the ideas that you might be having around the idea of democracy. So over the course of the assembly, you're really going to be hearing two sort of different types of evidence. And so you need to be thinking about this and aware of this, I think, when we're, when we're, talk, when we're listening. And hopefully that was the other thing to remind you. We're going to have our first bit of evidence. So, you know, you might want to be taking some notes as we go along. Now, two different types of evidence that we're going to be hearing from, two different types of presenters. So one are what we're calling informant presenters. So they're people who are sort of, they're providing a, sort of a balanced or a more neutral perspective and talking about things as they stand, what, what is actually the situation. And the second type of presenters, which we'll be hearing from later in the, the weekend, are people who've been invited to almost present an argument to you, present a perspective, present what they think is the best way forward. So when, we're, when you're considering what people are saying, it's probably worth keeping in mind. Some people will be trying to convince you of, you know, that their perspective is, is the way forward. And some people will be sort of giving you, I suppose, that baseline information, the background information, the foundations of which we can start thinking. Doesn't mean you can't question them but the people have been invited with two different roles. So on that note, we'll come back to these different types of evidence and how we consider different types of evidence and levels of persuasion. But I'm really pleased to introduce our, our first sort of evidence speaker, our first speaker today, uh, to introduce Pam Plummer, Pam Plummer, sorry, who's, who's taught, you know, who's been a teacher teaching history and politics in secondary schools across London and Southwest and the Channel Isles, a whole range of experience to draw on when she comes to present. And she's really starting our discussion with this idea of, well, what is democracy? So on that note, over to you, Pam. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Kayla, for that introduction. And I have to say how absolutely honoured I am to be here today. It is um, wonderful. So I'm just going to share my screen. That's a victus um, thing that we do on Zoom. And um, hopefully you can all now see my PowerPoint um, in, in operation. So um, a little bit about me before we start. As, as Kayla just said, I am a teacher. I've been teaching in secondary schools for over 20 years. So um, talking about history and politics uh, with, with young people and trying to get them to understand that democratic process a little bit better. Um, presently, I reside in Jersey and we've had our own citizens assembly here as well on climate change. So it's, it's wonderful to be part of this and, and genuinely a real privilege to be speaking. So where do we begin? As you know, um, in Alan's um, presentation at the start there, he raised many, many interesting questions. And there is no single right answer to the question, what is democracy? The word has been used in many different ways over many hundreds of years. The ancient Greeks used it to mean giving a say to the ordinary people. Whereas for the Romans, they saw it as a paradox. A government that shared some power with the people could actually have more power. At times, it has been misused by regimes that are not clearly democracies by any reasonable definition. Take, for example, 
the German Democratic Republic, or as we might know it better, East Germany. I am certain that there are few of us here who might agree that that could be called a democracy. So we can see that the term has been used and abused over time, often with the aim to make the government look better. So the word itself comes from the ancient Greek, and it means in simple terms, rule by the people. I'm sorry, my slides are automatically jumping ahead, so I apologize. Um, so demos means people, and kratos means rule, so rule by the people, simple. However, over centuries and through changes that have taken place over time and across different societies, several core ideas have emerged. These lie at the heart of how we view democracy today. The first of these is the idea that rulers cannot do whatever they want to do. King John here in my, on my screen is sitting here, here about to sign a document. Now he did just that, he did whatever he wanted to. He ordered people around, even kidnapping their wives and families so that they would support him. The barons, those are the people standing around him at his table. They got fed up and they forced him to sign a set of rules, the first of their kind, Magna Carta or the Great Charter in Latin. From this point onwards, and increasingly so as time progressed, rulers have to follow rules that are agreed between them and the people. This contract between the rulers and the ruled ensures that those in charge are accountable and or answerable to the people and cannot simply arrest you or demand all your money without good reason. Right. The second point is that everyone gets a say in deciding what those rules are. In the past, very few people, mainly the richest men, could be involved. Think back to that last slide with the barons standing around. You didn't see any women or young people or peasants standing around. This was because those people were the wealthiest and they were the ones who it was believed were the only ones who deserved a right to have a say. But as time has gone by, this has changed. Today, all men and women, even young people can be involved in voting and making up those rules and even standing as MPs. It's not just a small elite anymore. In Scotland and Wales even, 16 and 17 year olds can vote and participate in politics. The third point, or well, finally, for everyone to have a fair say, democracy requires certain elements. These include free expression, transparency or public sharing of information, a free media and a range of political parties to choose from. Now, this leads us to this today, and democracy looks like this. If we go back to the very first slide that we looked at, we will recall King John standing there, who had, very, who had lots of power. Today, the monarch has very little power because of Magna Carta and other documents that have been signed. The person where power really lies is with Parliament. And Parliament controls, it's elected by voters, all of us over 18, at general elections. Whoever wins the most votes in a constituency or area is the person who represents the area as the MP or Member of Parliament and takes a seat in the House of Commons. Within Parliament, there is normally one political party that holds a majority of seats and they form the government. Currently, this is Boris Johnson, someone you might recognize, leader of the Conservative Party. The government puts forward proposals and it needs Parliament support to get these agreed to turn into laws. There are also opposition political parties that hope to win more seats at the next election. 
so that they can form the next government. Currently, Labour is that largest opposition party and they are led by Sir Keir Starmer. Some of you may think political parties are a waste of time, but if we didn't have them, think how difficult it would be to decide who to vote for and how would MPs organise themselves in the Houses of Parliament. In Guernsey, near where I live in the Channel Islands, there is only one political party. Um, and this, um, at the last election, sorry, skipping my slides there, um, at the last election, there were 100 MPs to choose from. It would have been very, very difficult to decide who to vote for if you weren't really sure um, what each person stood for. And you'd have to spend a lot of time reading all their information to know. And I think that that's probably why in the Channel Islands, we have a very low voter turnout. So um, what happens in Parliament clearly is reported in the media. And we're very fortunate that we have that. And that's so that everybody knows what is going on. If you have a particular issue or a cause or something, we well, can talk to your MP, but you can also jo join a pressure group. Pressure groups put pressure on government to create change. Extinction Rebellion, this image here, is one of those pressure groups that you may know of others as well. They can protest to cause change, and they can also take part in signing petitions and other activities as well. Trade unions are also a form of pressure group, and they support their members to get the changes that they want to. Finally, all of this happens at different levels. I have described the UK Parliament and government, but there are also parliaments in Scotland and assemblies in Wales and Northern Ireland. And there are also mayors and local assemblies across the country. At all of these levels, power is shared and um, they each play a role in how the country is run. So finally, sorry, some features of democracy. Now it's important to note that we have discussed different elements of democracy today. There are many of these and different people have different ideas about what are the most important. But the ones that are kind of really key and central to the idea of democracy are these on the screen, that rulers are not free to act as they wish, that everyone can get involved, that there is an openness about all of this, and that we are involved in that process in some way or some form. And if we're unhappy, we can change things. We can vote and vote out the government and change them. We can take part in pressure groups or we can write to MPs. We have a say. We're involved in how the government works. And that, in a nutshell, is an, an aspect of UK democracy and how we might see democracy today. Thank you for listening. And I'll stop sharing now. Okay, well, look, thank you very much, Pam. Uh, you know, it's that starting to think, what, is the, what are the functions and the features of, of the democracy that we live in? What we're going to do now is put you back into the breakup rooms. I know you've been in some back and forth, back and forth bit, but we're gonna put you in for a, a good substantive conversation now to actually, uh, you know, really start thinking about, well, what do we like and what do we not like or dislike about how democracy in the UK works moment. And I'm sure you'll all have different views on this. It's a real chance to start sharing those, those initial thoughts on, you know, what do we like? What do we value? What actually works well? But also are there things that we dislike, things that concern us about how, you know, the, the system of democracy, which sounds all well and good on paper, might actually be being delivered. So we'll put you in the breakout rooms. Um, when you come back, we're going to hear a bit from what's some of the discussions that have happened in the different groups. And I really look forward to hearing what you've been talking about. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully, um, 
you you were able to get started for these conversations. I know it might have felt like, especially for, I know some groups at the end were feeling a bit like, oh, but we've still got all these things we want to say. This is just the beginning. There'll be lots of further opportunities to, to keep exploring some of these ideas. So before we go to lunch, we're just going to take a minute to hear back from the different groups, uh, to hear back what types of conversations, well, what were some of the, the, the most important or the most pressing kind of likes, the things that people generally, lots of people valued, and the things that were, I suppose, the biggest dislikes. So we've asked the facilitators to be prepared to sort of feedback just two or three likes or two or three, and two or three dislikes from their, their group that really sort of seemed to be either the ones that most people agreed on or the ones that there were really strong feelings about that seemed really quite sort of key when we're thinking about what makes a good democracy. So I'm going to start uh, just by calling on the facilitators in turn. People will notice that again, the session's being recorded, but it's just recording whoever is actually speaking. So I'm gonna go in the order that the, the groups are numbered which means, uh, David, I'm going to start with you. Hi, Kelly, yeah, and everyone else, thank you. Um, we, um, it's fair to say, I think, struggled a little to find too many likes, and we had many dislikes, and I wonder will others have been similar. Um, we picked two likes. The first one is the fact that everyone likes the fact that they have a vote, uh, and that the vote is for everyone. It's for all ages, all social types, uh, all genders, all backgrounds. Um, so the vote is for everyone. And the fact that there's a vote is great. Um, um, we also like the second point is that there are multiple parties and perspectives to choose from. It isn't a single party or just dual party state, but there's uh, diversity in the political system and you can vote for a range of different parties. In terms of dislikes, um, I know you may have a big list, but I'm going to keep you to two or three. I'll, I'll do two or three. Um, the first one uh, that we felt was it seems that it feels as a dislike that Parliament doesn't feel like it represents the, the ordinary person in the street. It feels really like a bunch of elites, people with uh, money and influence and power and doesn't feel reflective of our society. The second dislike was that there appears to be no consequences for telling lies or failing. Um, and there were lots of examples of that. The Brexit bus was given as one, but that sort of lack of um, consequence for not achieving or for telling lies uh, as people felt. And I'll name a third one if you like. Um, people felt that the frequency of general elections means that there's a sense that if you win uh, and you get in, then you can kind of do what you want if you're in the majority for quite a long time. And we had a conversation about whether there could be some kind of rolling system whereby um, Parliament is refreshed on a frequent basis because it feels like we get stuck. Mm -hmm. OK, look, it, really interesting points there. And again, I'm sure you could have got into lots of detail about them and you will have this opportunity. What we're doing now is just give you a sense because there may have been things that come up in other groups that didn't come up in your group. So it's good to hear some of the different perspectives or things people might not have thought of. Hallie, can I come to you next? Sure. In terms of what the group liked about how democracy works in the UK, the same, we can all vote if we choose to. Uh, second point was a sense that it's actually the least worst option, sort of no matter how frustrating, it's better than other things. You know, you do have opportunities of freedom of speech and a degree of access to power. And thirdly, the, the, the sense there is a process an individual member can go to the public, a member of the public can go through if they have a problem, for example, they can approach their MP. And um, in fact, anyone can stand to be an MP. Um, in terms of dislikes, we had quite a lot that we had to get through. Um, so this isn't covering them all. But the, there, was a, there was quite a lot of discussion about the fact that the public's voices aren't really being heard. And if they are, they aren't really being listened to properly and acted upon by government. And it's not always clear how to have a say, uh, how to express your, get your voice heard. There was worry about promises not being kept to, and for example, manifestos, and there was a concern about spin. Um, and there's also dislike amongst some of, of the first past the post 
and the feeling that this, this isn't um, representative of the people. Okay, again, some really different points coming up there as well about sort of systems, uh, but again, similar things around promises maybe not being kept. Janet, I'm coming to you next, group three. Hi, um, similarly, we had more dislikes than likes. <laughs> um, and, and our likes were similar. So the, 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 the kind of most important thing that, that, that my group likes about the, the system, the way it works just now, is that they're involved, they have a vote, they have a choice, we, everyone has a right to a vote. Um, and there is a chance that if you don't like the government that gets voted in, you, you have a way of changing that um, at next time next time an election comes around. Um, and there was always a also a little bit of Yes, there are lots of flaws, um, but there's some other systems that would be worse. So maybe it, it's 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 better than it could that it could be. We could be worse mm -hmm. off. Um, and then there's some other more complicated ones that aren't easy to kind of cluster and sum up. So we'll we'll leave them. But there's I know they're captured. Yeah, um, there's, there's plenty of opportunity for them to come back. Yeah, on the dis the dislikes, um, there are three. The first one is that the current system is flawed, and there are various reasons for that that covered things like voting systems and and how you, how you're forced to vote for you know the, the difficulty of finding a party that that represents everything you believe and not some things you don't believe um the i i guess there's there's a really central one which is similar to has already been said um about accountability and honesty just being lacking so it's about politicians and, and their behaviour and the, the extent to which we can hold them account between to account between elections properly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one is about how difficult it is for voters to be fully informed and to effectively hold the governments to account, how difficult it is to untangle the issues and how much work and effort you have to put into understanding in order to be able to make a really informed vote when elections come round. Okay, thanks, Janet. Now I'm conscious of time and I know, you know, we've still got quite a few groups to get through. So I'm just going to ask people to be really sort of focused in their feedback. So I'm coming to Anita now for group four. Okay, so quite similar to what we've heard already. The main thing is that we were happy that we get to vote and that we can vote in a representative and that we can even recall elections as well to some degree. Um, and that um, although we're a United Kingdom, England doesn't have complete dominance politically. Um, so that, that was seen as a good thing. However, um, some felt that first past the post is not representative. And in particular, uh, that there should be penalties for MPs breaching their manifesto pledges. Um, uh, if they're not sure on how to vote on an issue, they should ask the people, they shouldn't be able to abstain from um, voting on a particular issue. An example is the um, national insurance um, tax, um, because if you're meant to represent the people, how can you abstain from, 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 from that um, role? Uh, yeah, and I'll leave it there. Okay, great. Again, different points coming up there. Uh, the one around this sort of abstention is an interesting one I'm sure we'll explore. Emily, can I come to you? Yes, of course. So in my group, um, quite a wide ranging discussion on likes and dislikes, we've come up with two likes. So the first um, thing is freedom of speech. And the second is our civil liberties and the right to protest. In terms of what we disliked about how democracy works in the UK, um, there was firstly politicians, it was felt that they were the best of a bad bunch. We also had the threats to civil liberties and protest with current government legislation going through um, parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, there was also a feeling among some people in the group that um, we needed to have better um, kind of local party political campaigning. So it's more clear who you can vote for and what they stand for. So um, yeah, that that kind of information was given to you and, and you were kind of a bit more campaigned at a local level in terms of who you could vote for um, in your area. Okay, thanks Emily. So again, it sounds like groups are picking up on different things, which is, which is fantastic. Andy, can we come to you? Yes. So in our group, uh, the things that they liked were having a voice, having representation, 
the fact that you can vote out political parties if you don't like their policies, uh, having freedoms, for example, freedom of press, uh, freedom of speech. Things they disliked were that it's uh, overcomplicated, uh, isn't transparent, the language is inaccessible and there's too much jargon. Um, another thing they disliked is the fact, it's been mentioned before, of the, the fact that there's too much big money lobbying and the, the, the system in general represents the rich. Okay, thank you Andy. Um, let's come to Sarah next. So our two priority likes, uh, the first was the chance for people to have a voice and the fact that a lot of people can be heard. Um, and the second like, uh, priority like, was the, the life of the theory of democracy, although we weren't quite sure it worked like that in practice. Um, our three priority dislikes, the first uh, was corruption and also the influence of personal and party agendas. Um, the second was the fact that half the population aren't satisfied with democracy and a feeling that that was partly due to poor quality information and therefore the need for unbiased uh, information produced ideally by an unbiased third party. Um, and the third was the fact that there's not enough education about politics and democracy in schools and the feeling that it should be taught uh, from as young an age as possible. Okay, so again, different perspectives coming up there, particularly that focus on, on information and how people know and can be informed. Uh, Latoya, can we come to you next? Oh, hi. Um, <clears throat> yes, I think uh, our group, similarly, um, very few likes in comparison to dislikes, um, similar themes, what we liked. Um, is that um, there is, we, we can vote um, and uh, we, we do have the ability to affect change. There is um, a, a variety within our political uh, system and that there's a certain amount of fairness to, to, to our system and, and um, there are things in place to support that fairness. Um, what we disliked, um, again, similarly to similar, similar to others, um, there was a real strong feeling around unchecked power. So, um, sort of unelected people who who make decisions. Um, there was a sense that um, the, the system doesn't support finding common ground. So, um, when a party gets in, there's a very there's a narrow people in in society who are being served. Um, and then there was a, a lot of discussion around um, how skilled, how much skill or knowledge do, do our individual MPs and um, Secretary of State have to actually run their briefs correctly, so um, or efficiently. So sh how, how much should the PM be making decisions about health? He's not a health expert. So that that was a something else that we we switched about. Yeah, so it really is where the, where the knowledge that's informing some of these decisions are coming from. Another interesting point coming up there. Um, Remco, can I come to you next? Thank you very much. Um, one of the points that I would liked about the current system, or about the current, uh, about the way democracy works in the UK, is that uh, it feels like the UK is a relatively safe country to live in. Uh, that relates to freedom of speech as well. Another thing that the group liked was that democracy offers uh, an, an element of structure. It offers unity across the four nations and therefore it is effective in organizing key services. Uh, now, what we disliked as a group, that there is not enough information and participation for politics to be relevant and meaningful to everyone in society. That the, the group felt that there was a lack of scrutiny and transparency, especially with regard to the people who are in power and the business interests that they are related to. Um, there was a point about uh, the political system not being suited to people's priorities, and that was about the voting system, and it was about that it, the the way that politics work doesn't seem to be. Um, reflecting people's everyday lives very much. So that, that's a quick summary of where we got to. Hey, thanks very much, Remco. Uh, we've got two more groups there. So, Carl, can I come to you next? Yeah, it'd be fair to say that we didn't come to any priorities. So um, I'm just gonna be selective. Okay, so apologies to the group. 
No, first of all, I think the, this notion, a lot of things reflected, but democracy is more than just voting. So the fact that, you know, it, you are pressure groups, lobbyists can also affect change, that change sometimes happens beyond the ballot box. Um, and good, I suppose the other broad point is good that we can vote, but there was a lot of discussion about the problems behind that. Okay, um, in terms of disliking, I'd say broadly speaking, this issue that um, if you have power, how much accountability is there really? And, you know, people in power can demonize people and use that to their own ends, and they're not really that accountable. Um, and whilst voting gives you a voice, it also doesn't give you a voice because you're not really entirely sure what you're voting for and people don't follow their manifestos and do other things. And there's a whole sheet of other things that people said, but um, those, are, those are a couple of things where there was some coalescence. Okay, thanks very much, Carl. And again, I mean, you'll, you'll all know the details of the conversations you were involved in, and it's not to try and sum them up in, in a two minute space, but you know, all of that is still there, all of that is still informing your thinking and the discussions we're going to be continuing on. And last group, group 11, Liz. Um, yes, so we had three likes and three dislikes. Um, so likes, uh, freedom of speech, uh, the right to exercise your vote, and that um, the democratic system can allow for people to vote on policies that benefit the whole, and links were made to Nye Bevan and the welfare state. Um, then dislikes. Um, do as I say, not as I do, double standard, sense of entitlement leading to us and them and lack of trust. Uh, the current electoral system leads to elective dictatorship, um, lack of con the overarching constitution, lack of PR leads to a lack of balanced government, so the party in power um, amp is, is amplified and they can change what they like. And third, exploitation of power and control, particularly with financing and lobbyists and companies, two political parties leading to corruption and conflict of interest. Okay, so again, hopefully, uh, hopefully it was interesting listening back to some of the, the rest of the conversations that people have been having. And you can see that, you know, I know we didn't hear everything that came up in each group, but there does seem that there were some, you know, some common themes coming up there, but also different tracks that individual conversations have taken. Um, but hand up again, was there something that you wanted to add to that, Catherine? Yes, I, f I find it interesting that facilitator in room nine said that the group generally felt UK was a safe place to, to live in. Um, from the, the bottom up, that's not my understanding of the UK. There's a lot of gang warfare. Okay. There's a lot of internal. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the ma, ma, like ma, minorities are not um, comfortable. Okay, and as we've said, everyone's going to have different perspectives, and I think we'll dig into a lot of this. But you know, the the group obviously, you know, in that discussion, and we started talking about that. Yeah, you know, compared to you know, compared to many other places, that, that having a democracy it sort of created a space that for you know as many people as possible, or majority that actually comparatively felt safe. So I think we'll get a chance to dig into some of these a bit more as we as we go forward. And it'll be interesting to probe into that one a little bit more as a, you know, in the afternoon. What I don't want to do though, is keep people away from their lunch because we're due to have a lunch break and it's really important that we don't sort of drag these, like get, run over time or anything with these meetings that we give you the breaks that you need to have. So what I'm, just a couple of things before lunch that I need to pass on. Um, firstly, thank you. Thank you for, for, for coming on this morning, for giving, you know, it's, it's always a bit of an uncertainty. You don't really know what it's going to be like, what's going to be happening, but hopefully you're starting to get a sense that we're going to go through this process of sort of taking in bits of information, having time to discuss it, really test out what are some of the different opinions across the room and collect that range of opinions as well. When we are restarting again at two o'clock, um, you just use the same Zoom link as you used this morning. So 
just come back on, click that link again. You'll be in the waiting room and we will let you in just sort of for two o'clock. I think that's the main things I need to say. Uh, Alan, anything you want to say just to close up today? Uh, no, that sounds fantastic to me. It was really interesting hearing all of those thoughts from the group. So many different perspectives coming there and some themes as well uh, coming across quite strongly. So I think we've had a fantastic start this morning. Uh, many thanks to all of the facilitators for working very hard on all of that. Uh, but much, uh, most importantly, many thanks to all of you, the members of the Assembly. Um, hope you're now getting a feel of what it's like to be a member, a member of the Citizens' Assembly. Hope you all managed to have a very nice lunch. And we'll see you back here again at two o'clock. Yep. And when we come back this afternoon, we're going to be focusing a bit more on this idea of, you know, what are what are some of the positives, but also some of the concerns about our existing democracy. But then moving into hearing some information and from some different perspectives too about well, what are the features that would make a, a really good democracy, the type of democracy that people want to live in. <laughs>